All right, students, let's take notes on ions and isotopes. Get out your science notebook and a piece of paper. Let's get started. Let's start with the essential question at the top of the page. What happens to an atom if I change the number of protons, neutrons, or electrons? Previously, we learned about the periodic table and how it organizes atoms based on different properties. On the periodic table, we can get each element's information from each of the element cards, such as the atomic number, the element symbol, the name, and the atomic mass. From this, we learn generally about the different numbers of subatomic particles. But what happens if we change those numbers? Let's start with the proton. The protons come from the atomic number. That's the identity of the atom. Now, what happens if we change the number of proton? Well, if we change the number of protons, then we get a completely different element with different properties. So changing the number of proton changes the identity of the element. All right, how about neutrons? Well, typically neutrons are found by taking the mass found on the periodic table and subtracting the atomic number. And that's true for the average isotope. But what's an isotope and can we change the number of neutrons? Well, isotopes are atoms of the same element i.e. they have the same number of protons because they are the same element, but they have different masses. And they have different masses because we change the numbers of neutrons. Take a look at these three examples here. All of these are isotopes of carbon. The one on the left is called carbon-12 or carbon-12. That means that it's carbon with a mass of 12. That mass is because there are six protons and six neutrons. There's also carbon-13. Carbon-13 comes from six protons and seven neutrons. And there's also carbon-14, six protons, just like all the other carbons, but this time there are eight neutrons. All of these are isotopes of carbon. I wanna take a look really quickly at these percentages. The percentages are the percent abundance we find this element in the universe. Notice that there's a lot more chance of finding carbon-12 than there is finding carbon-13 and carbon-14. Both carbon-12 and carbon-13 have stable nuclei. They're held together fairly well, um, but carbon-14 has an unstable nucleus. That's probably why we only find less than 0.1% of carbon-14 in the universe. This all relates back to the periodic table of the elements. If we look at each of the element symbols, their masses on the bottom are decimal masses. They're not whole numbers. And that's because these represent the average mass of that element's isotopes based on its abundance. So carbon, for example, is 12.01. The reason it's 12.01 is because we see more carbon-12 in the universe. So if we round that number, we get 12. However, there still is more carbons, carbon-13 and carbon-14, although they affect the average a little bit less than the most abundant elements. All right, so let's talk about how we symbolize these on our paper and in textbooks. So isotope notation is written like this. Let's start with carbon-12. Carbon-12 can be written with the symbol C and a little 12 of the upper left-hand corner. The little 12 represents the mass of that isotope of carbon. Now, sometimes you do see a number on the bottom left-hand side. That's just the atomic number, which for carbon, it's six. This is really an optional number, and the reason it's optional is because it will always be six. For the other carbons, however, carbon-13 and carbon-14, the masses might change, even though the atomic number might be the same. All right, here's a student practice. I recommend you pause the video right now, read the practice and see if you can figure it out yourself. Did you pause the video? I hope so. The question asks, what is the name and isotope notation for a bromine isotope with 47 neutrons? Well, in order to answer this question, we need to jump to the periodic table and get a little bit of information, but not all of it. Here's bromine found on the periodic table. We need it because we need to know the symbol for bromine in order to do isotope notation. And we also need the number of protons, but we don't want the atomic mass. This is an isotope of bromine, so we're not gonna look at the mass as shown on the periodic table. This isotope has a different mass. We get the mass by taking the number of protons, which is always 35 for, for bromine, and we add it to the number of neutrons, which is new for this isotope. So 35 plus 47 is a mass of 82. So this bromine has a mass of 82. This is an isotope of bromine, and we also might call it bromine 82. All right, so neutrons. 
if we change the number of neutrons, we change the mass of the element. And we call these different elements with different masses isotopes. All right, let's go down to electrons now. We know that typically electrons are equal to the number of protons, but that's only in, if the atom has a neutral charge. Well, let's talk about atomic charge. Atoms get their charge when, from their protons, which are positive, and the electrons, which are negative. These give the net charge of the atom. Now, typically, we say an atom is neutral if it has zero charge, if there's equal numbers of protons and electrons. But we call an atom an ion if it has a non-zero charge, either positive or negative. In fact, let's talk about the different types of ions. An atom is a, or an ion is a cation if it has less electrons than normal and a positive charge. An atom is called an anion if it has more electrons than normal and a net negative charge. I like to remember cations because of cats. Cats have paws, just like cations have positive charge. Here's ion notation. This is how we would write in textbooks and our, and our notebooks ions for different elements. The one on the left is bromine, that's a negative two ion. So we would write a little two, negative two at the upper right hand corner. This means that this bromine has two extra electrons than it normally does. Neon in the middle is neutral. It does not have a charge. So in the upper right hand corner, we don't write anything. That's because it has equal numbers of protons and electrons. It's neutral. Aluminum on the right hand side is a positive three ion. So we write positive three in the upper right hand corner. This aluminum has three less electrons than it normally does. All right, try it yourself. What's the net charge of sulfur with 18 electrons? Pause the video, see if you can figure it out. All right, I'm gonna give you the answer. I hope you tried yourself. Here's sulfur found on the periodic table. We need a little bit of information from this sulfur. We need to know the number of protons. Sulfur always has 16 protons. So sulfur has 16 positively charged subatomic particles in it. That's important for the charge. Now this sulfur is special in the practice. It doesn't have the normal number of electrons. It has 18 electrons. Electrons provide negative charge to this sulfur. So I'm gonna add negative 18 to this sulfur. So if I take positive 16 and add a negative 18 to it, then I'm gonna get a total net charge of minus two. So I'm gonna write the symbol of sulfur with a, little, with a negative two in the upper right hand corner. All right, so going back to electrons, if we change the number of electrons, we change the charge of that element. And if that element has a charge, we typically call it an ion, either a cation or an anion. That's the end of our notes. Let's take some time right now and review and highlight those key terms. If you have a highlighter or colored pencil, this is a great time to go back and get this essential stuff. Ponder and ask questions. Are you still confused? Well, maybe write those questions down and seek answers to those questions. Either ask your instructor, ask somebody else, or search for external answers from YouTube or web searches. Finally, summarize and answer the essential question. Do you remember that essential question you wrote at the top of your page? Can you answer that with detail? Can you answer it with examples? If so, you're off to a great start. All right, good luck.